Cyclist.io. Hello, everyone. Hello, everybody. This is I'm Rachel and I'm Delia. And you are watching and listening to You Deserve Fresh, Fresh Lettuce. Lettuce. Um, thank you so much for coming back for another episode. We're so excited to bring you our stories of how we survived and thrived after Absolutely. divorce. Um, but also just a reminder, this is not us advocating for divorce. If anything, you might be thinking about divorce. And after you hear some of our lovely stories or horror stories, depending on how they <laughs> resonate Depending on you. your perspective on life, you they might, can be good or bad. <laughs> you might decide to figure it out. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Um, in this episode, we're going to be talking about um, staying after he has cheated. Mm. It's something that both of us have done. We have, yeah. And so we're basically going to dive right in um I don't know if you want to start or you want me to start or well I mean I think it's really simple uh, a lot of the times when we do stay after a person has cheated or has you know failed their your marriage um I think what happens is I think you want to protect your family keep everything together if the holidays come I always say there's never a good time to leave anybody because oh, come January to December there's always something going on there's probably pre-planned <laughs> trips yeah. and or someone's birthday it's like well yeah. it's grandpa's birthday we can't you know break yeah. up yet and so you always want to think that the person that is telling you I'm sorry forgive me then you want to believe that this is the only and last time but this is the only time maybe you found out about it, or maybe this is the second time and you stayed. Um, but uh, to say once a cheater, always a cheater. I mean, I, I if I had to put like some weight on that as far as percentages, I would say it's about an 80 20. I mean, some people might have a little remorse there, about 20% yeah, remorse. Yeah. But if once a cheater, 80% of the time, they're going to cheat. You know, I have, I'm <laughs> and, and I'm completely with it. The thing I like to say because I learned this is almost like once he's cheated on you, he will always cheat on you. Because I, right. uh -huh, I have met people. Who cheated on, in one relationship, right. but for whatever reason, by the next one, they're like, you know, it's just not the way I yeah. want to live my life. Right. So that makes it kind of hard. I would actually apply Delia's 80-20 to okay. like the second relationship <laughs> okay. that is after all the cheating disaster. So you do feel that the person's going to cheat 100% of the time? I think once they cheat on you and they get you think that taste. Once, do you think that once they're like sloppy eaters, they just, they're just like, Bleh. You know how they say like pit bulls, like pit yeah. bull dogs, like once they taste the blood. And then they're on it's it. It's almost like. How do you make them vegan? You know what I mean? <laughs> how do you get that dog how to do eat some lettuce? Yeah. <laughs> yes, fresh lettuce. Fresh lettuce. Yeah, they're not going to be vegan. So no. I totally understand. I, I kind of could see that too. Um, I think maybe it's like that whole, I don't know, that you, you want to. Uh, be a hopeless romantic or you want to think that you know this person's really there for you and they're not going to be doing that that's what I think you know at the end of the day when you are in a family you know you're in a marriage you're in a family maybe you're not even married to right. the guy and you already gave him kids and that's a whole other right that's a whole other thing um but you know you feel a sense of obligation right and here's something to remember you went into it probably thinking that this commitment of children or this commitment of yeah. vows whatever it may be means something right? right so clearly it means something to you right but did it really mean that to them because my grandfather he used to joke around and you know may god rest his soul like he was married to my grandmother for 60 something years and he used to say she got married. I never got married. Hello. You know? <laughs> He's and like, so <laughs> she is the one that uh, committed to me. I didn't commit to her. Like, now, I'm Latina, so at the end of the day, it could be like a weird cultural thing, a little bit be. of machismo yeah, going on bit. or whatever. But, you know, it was an always an interesting thing that it was like, hee hee ha ha. Yeah. But I know that my grandmother, uh, my grandmother had told me a story about my grandfather mm. had been, um, he had been unfaithful early on. And in fact, when, when I was newly married, I found out my husband had cheated. Right. I was pregnant at the time, and so I felt stuck. And um, when he cheated, and then I found out, like, afterwards with right. my second son. But I went to my grandparents. Right. And so it is important to have 
someone you can go to that kind of have like that unity where someone that you know you can confide in and say hey this is what's going on yeah and you know being that they had been married so many years and i i know that they had seen a lot of things i went to them and and i was like oh my god i don't know what to do and i feel so stuck and right you know and my grandfather said listen i cheated on your grandma right and um early on in the marriage and once your grandma found out and the whole thing fell apart she threatened to leave and that whole thing he said he learned his lesson okay. and although he said he, but do you think he learned his lesson or do you think he got sneakier because that's sometimes something that i think about because it's like okay well now rather than having you know my phone where you know maybe someone's calling me on my phone because I can imagine that nowadays, especially with social media, it's a lot easier for someone to communicate with yes. you rather than like when your grandparents were doing it. Yeah, he would just go get some tortillas, <laughs> and then you get some masa. <laughs> you, know? you know, I mean, and so nowadays it's a little different. You I know? think it's so hard to compare that time versus to this now. time. But I can tell you that when he told me that, it made me have a little bit of hope. Okay, in that like strike one type thing and so that really that conversation with my grandparents and I, you know and I really spoke to my grandma for right. a long like a couple of years after yeah. it happened to find out how she got through it and what right. I saw yeah was she never got through it she never got over it I think I think as women uh and I always say this and this is like my saying this is like my little mantra and I'm going to share with you guys I always say if you decide to stay okay and, and I learned this afterwards, by the way, uh, if you do decide to stay, then it's something that's already happened. And if you want to believe that the person's going to change, then that's on you. But past tense is nonsense. Is that what I always say? <laughs> past tense is nonsense. I'm like, okay, we can't live in the past, so we got to move forward. If I forgive the man, then I'm just going to make him miserable. I'm going to make myself miserable. We're not going to be living in peace and unity. Why? Because I keep bringing it up. Yes. And what about Vanessa? Oh. What about Vanessa? You know, and yes. if you're getting, you know, if you're drinking a little tequila, forget it. I oh. mean, oh. then, yeah, no. you know, yeah. <laughs> the chat are going to be yeah. flying. So I always, I always, in my opinion, feel like if you are going to go ahead and accept the person for what, how wrong they did you, then you got to let it go. And if you can't let it go, then you got to let it go. Gotta, it means yeah. that you got to make those changes, whether you yeah. have to call, you know, attorneys or come to some type of settlement or an agreement or whatever it is. Um, and it's a lot easier said than done, in my opinion. Oh, my God. I mean, because that was, and you're exactly right, and that was my whole thing was I would listen to my grandmother yeah. and, I would, and I would start to connect the dots that she's had this resentment towards me. Right. Even in their happiest moments, it's like, hmm. Right? I wonder if she's smiling and underneath she's like, oh, I'm going to put something in your sofa today. You know I, mean? <laughs> I mean, she was feisty. She, she was, was feisty. feisty, yeah. But, you know, at the end of the day, it made me think, and I thought, okay, for the sake of my children. Of course. Because I had just had a newborn at this point. Uh, he was like a week and old. And so that means your hormones are going. So high. I'm like, how do I leave with a newborn? Like, then he just gets to, what, go run around, be yep. free and single. Like, it just didn't make sense. So I decided to stay. Okay. And in staying, I also understood there was going to be a lot of cleanup that had to be done. Of course. And in the cleanup, I understood that I had to do most of the cleaning. See, as women, we expect the person who caused the tears to wipe them away. Right. And that's not always the case. It doesn't always work that way. They might come around and be like, oh, you know, and, and they'll be kinder. And you get the gifts and the flowers and the, yeah. oh, here, honey, I made you coffee or whatever. You get these yeah. things. But then now you're resentful because you're like... Well, why didn't you do that before? And right. of course, or what that. are you hiding now? Oh, or why are you going to the store at this time? Isn't it too late? Or isn't the store closed? And so I, I think that a lot of the times, you know, you do forgive, and and it's a whole part of you. I, you know, when people say I will forgive him, but I won't forget, it's the same thing. Um, I mean, you come on, go. you gotta let both of them go. You forgive, you forget. You, you know, past tense is nonsense. But at the, at the same time, it's like you're ready for the next blow. You're like, when is the next blow going to happen? Yeah. Because now you don't trust them. And I think there's nothing worse, in my opinion, than if he leaves his phone out that I have to go through it. Like, uh, that is the worst way to live, in my opinion. It like, is. It's, it's just, it's like almost like you have a ball and chain because you're yes. like, what are they doing? And so I think that's just not a way to live. I, I 100%. And when I actually ended up years later um, leaving my husband for 
adultery, right? right? Which was like, here we go with the once a cheater, always a cheater. A cheater yeah. I mean, I lost like 12 additional years. And I can't say lost because we had really a lot of wonderful moments right. in those years, especially with our sons and everything. But one of the things was that in along the journey one time he said, this is when we're still together right before divorce. And he said, you know, I missed that look you used to give me. I miss the way you would look at me like in our when first year of marriage. And, and I said, what do you mean? And he goes, you just, you looked at me like I could do no wrong. And I mm. said, well, because that's what I thought until you showed me what yeah. you could do. Right. And then now you don't trust him. And now it's like, I just see him. You see him for what I he is. I just see him for what he is. And it's almost like everything he would do. So it went from like, okay, he got caught cheating when I was young and you know, our pregnant or you know pregnant or whatever having the baby yeah and it was almost like things start appearing so right. it's like this perfect man nobody's yeah. perfect but this man that i thought oh my gosh my husband my again. So lucky. he does yeah. that and all of a sudden now i see like the tail or like yeah. the ears or something yeah. and then it was like a couple years later i see him at a christmas party company party and he's like let me get you a drink to some other girl and there's all these little gestures and you're like wow you're very like are you yeah. a server for the night what's yeah. going on with you like, like i didn't too know friendly <laughs> yes. and it's like i'm i'm a friendly person listen yeah. i'm a super friendly person right. i'm very attentive and i'm very like oh my gosh like very yeah, lighthearted with yeah. everyone but when he was doing it i was like Mm. Red flag, red flag. Right, and then if she's cute, forget it. You're like, no wonder. But I mean, if she was a little bit older, you would just think, oh, he's just being a gentleman. <laughs> yeah. Or who knows, maybe he wants a sugar mama, you know? You know, <laughs> you never but you, know just, what but you find problems oh, yeah. in everything. You start finding yeah. dog hairs everywhere, everywhere, is like what I like to say. It's <laughs> Do like... you have a lit roller? <laughs> Yeah, I totally get it. So um, true. So it does make it hard. It does make it, it does hard. make it a lot, a lot, uh, a lot more difficult than not. And I think um, you got to make that decision because you know you're gonna live in a life of hostility. You're gonna live in a life of not being able to trust a person. I know, for instance, for me, when I caught my ex husband cheating, not once, not twice, you know, more than more than a few times. And I think after a while, it's like they just know that you're going to forgive and try to forget and forgive and forget. And then after a while, they start saying that you're crazy. Then your threats was, don't even matter. Right. They're like, you already said you were going to leave and you're yeah. still here. And then and then when you finally decide to say, hey, I'm out, I'm clocking out, like, you know, figure it out, I'm clocking out. Now they're like, wait they a can't minute, they can't believe it. Because like, mm-hmm. it's been so long that you've called their bluff. You've called their bluff like, hey, you do this again. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. And the thing is that you don't want to have to expose yourself to your friends, your family, your children, if you have children, the things that you've built to say, I don't even care about any of this. I will rebuild and move on. And I'm okay with that. I'm not going to put up with this because A, you know what? It's not even about the time that you've invested. It's the additional time that you're going to invest in a dead-end relationship. It's like... It's like driving in a cul-de-sac and, and trying to go straight. straight. And the sign says, not a through street. Not a through street. Not and you're still street. trying to go through. If you know it's dead end, you got to just, you know, look for a different route. And then, you know, rebuild yourself, rebuild your body, spirit, soul, and find yourself. And I think that that's what it boils down to, in my opinion. Yeah. And, you know, I had heard a really wonderful piece of advice. Now, this was right after I left my husband, and it was actually his cousin a female cousin of his that i was very close to and right. we're sitting there and she's looking at me and she goes is this real and i yeah. said it's real yeah and she said i've never seen you pull a stunt in ah. the 20 years like i've never seen you cry wolf right so she goes so, and i thought this has to be real but let me ask her and i said yeah. it's real why wouldn't it be and she goes you know because women sometimes leave their men to punish them not to leave them leave them Right. So they'll like go to their mothers. They're like, I'm out of here. Get and out of here. Or they, they have like the yellow envelope yeah. with the divorce papers yeah. and they're like smacking they're it like, around the place. Go place. to your brothers yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And she said something that someone told her. And she said, you know, because as women, we should never leave our husbands to punish them. I because agree. I guarantee you, and this is true, like I guarantee yes. you when you let that man walk out that door and you're thinking, you're oh, I'm back? teaching him a lesson. Yeah. But he'll be back. Right. Oh no! When he steps out, when he's he crossed that line, in his mind, out. he's going from husband, father, whatever, to like 
Single man. The single man. He's <laughs> yes. Captain Save a Ho. He's all kinds of good. He's things. everything. He's, he's all everywhere. kinds of good good. Yes. He's going to be all yes. over them streets and he's going to yep. be hitting on people. And you're going to hear things, whether it's when he comes back and you're talking and you're like, well, what'd you do when you're out there? Yeah. And then you're not going to like it. And you're not going to like it. A friend runs into him on the streets. So you're not going to like it. Or a friend of a friend. Because sometimes the guys, uh, and either the girls or the guys, if depending on the type of uh, you know life that you live, the guy will try to come at you by being with one of your friends. Because yep. that happened to me also. But yep. thank God I was out of the relationship at that time. And I saw the messages come through and it was... Through a friend, trying to message a friend, and I'm like, wow, he didn't wait. Just he no. did not wait. I mean, he was ready to attack. Yeah, he. They know, yeah. and um, my ex also did the same thing, and he went right to some of my friends, and right, and one of them actually said, um, I don't know how to tell you this except for just to tell you. He texted me, and he's wanting to talk. Um, and you know what? I want to hear what he has to say. Yeah. But I think you should be on the line. Because mm. she said, I don't want any weird mis- Weirdness, so, yeah. So I said, let's do it. And yeah. you know, it's childish, and it's high school. It but you know what? But- I was on the on the line, and he didn't know. Yeah. And I got... And it was so important, let me tell you, that that happened. If you're a woman who your friend's husband's reaching out or whatever, do that. Yeah. Do what you can for that. Because... The re- here's why I'm saying it. It could get messy. It could. It could get messy. Very it's, messy. But if you know that she's not going back. Like right. if you know she's not going back. Like that was my friend. She knew I wasn't going back. She knew yeah. I was out, out. Like I don't play games yep. by that point, you know. We're done, done. So basically I listened in and I got to hear who he is to everyone else. The suave guy. Yeah, like because I don't see that man. guy. I don't see the guy the one that's, that's like, like, hey, let's just go to lunch. Yeah. Baby, and I he, got you. He was like, you know, <laughs> I've always yeah. liked the way you blah, blah, blah. And you're and so the way nice. That you hair. And it start. <laughs> and by the way, it started off yeah. with, he led with like, I'm so glad, you know, you, you're willing to talk to me. Wow. I don't know what to do about Rachel. Wow. Maybe She's you can issue. help me. Right. Like maybe you oh can help gosh. me. And sometimes men genuinely want help. I can help, see that, yes. But, but this one now. was just using it to put her guard down, which her guard was up because she had me on the line. Right, of course. And it was like to supposedly maybe help us get back together. Yep. And then within 45 minutes, he's like, so, you know, I do you want to meet for coffee? Sorry. And maybe we can talk in person. Can I pick you up? Yes. You know, there's a nightclub oh, going on. Yes. And then guess what? She wasn't the only one. It turned out she, he hit this one, this one, this one, this one. So... Uh, it became a, a tough thing to, and not everybody told me. And let me tell uh, you, not everyone told me. There's people. But I want to, I, I want to think that maybe they're doing it out of protection, like they want to protect you. And then there's people that just maybe have always looked at your husband to yeah, say, hey, yeah. you know, I wouldn't mind. Yeah. But the thing is, some of these people have never told me, and yeah. they don't know that I know till this mm. day. You're you like know. 10 years later, you're like, yeah. it's okay, I already know. I'm on to the next. Know. We're good. Yeah. It's not even that big yeah. of a deal. But yeah. I, I just I think there's a lot of growth that happens when you um, when you've been cheated on and if you're the cheater I imagine that there has to be some type of growth also within you yeah. in order to know that it's not even about the golden rule you know do unto others what you would like for them to do unto you some of the times it's not even about like what did I do to, des- to deserve this like what what did I do like where did I go wrong because a lot of the times I think that we also blame ourselves like was I not dressed up enough? Did I not have my hair done? Did I not wear, you know, was I not wearing the appropriate things? Did I not contribute enough? And I think it has nothing to do with you per se. It's a character flaw on that person if they're oh, the ones 100%. doing that. hundred percent. So yeah. it has absolutely nothing to do with you. Like I remember there was a moment in time where I look at pictures and I actually went through a phase. And I would say phase as in like five years of being completely anorexic. Where like double zero was way too big yeah. for me and I had to have it hemmed because I just thought I was just not skinny enough. I just wasn't pretty enough. And then once I really, you know, did the work, I realized that it has nothing to do with me. Right. It's a character flaw on him. It's And it took a while. Yeah, it's going to take a while. It is 100% a reflection of them not and, their own, of and their own insecurities. And we're actually going to do a special episode right. on more of that because right. it's 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 such a hard I want to kind of, it's like a mind f. I don't yeah. want to say, I don't want to say a bad word. <laughs> But, you know, but it, if it, it feels it, right, say it. You know what I mean? It's a, it's <laughs> just, a mind fuck. I mean, that's just mind. what it is. Yeah. Because you do, you start looking at yourself and asking yourself, what's wrong with me? Especially right. 
the interesting thing now, I don't know about you with your ex, but with my ex, the, the women that he cheated with, um, they were, and let me, I mean, I don't want to be rude because right. I don't want to be arrogant, right. but let me tell you something. Those women, and I don't even care, they yes. search the web and they stalk me and they're hearing this, <laughs> yes. this is for you. Yes. Um, there wasn't anything there. I mean, for him, there yes. was, but as far as what I thought right. men would go for, or especially right. at the time in my marriage, because Delia talks about her struggle looking right. back with like her weight and being underweight and stuff like that, and I... Was very I took very good care of myself and everything, right. and actually after my divorce I gained fifty pounds for like a whole world of other reasons, yeah. but it was like oh how could this happen? But yeah. when I was married, I remember thinking ooh if I even gained ten pounds I'd be like oh my god I gotta I gotta right. cut it I gotta right. and I really tried and we're gonna talk about and we're gonna but talk I do about feel that. that there's also a part of of the men if there's like this subtle abuse that happens also where they're like oh you gained weight huh and I mean. I am 103 pounds. Yeah, she's tiny. I mean, how, I mean, not now, but I was then because I was completely anorexic. And so uh, I'm like, oh my gosh, how does he know I gained three pounds? I get on the scale and I'm like, he knew I gained three pounds. And that was his sabotage. He was sabotaging me because of the things that he was doing. And then not until afterwards that I did the healing and not until afterwards after I did the work to get myself to the point that I am, which by the way, I'm like 20 pounds heavier <laughs> and I'm happy. Um, and everyone would be like, Miha, happy and happy. are you with me? Checking her BMI right here. Are you okay? <laughs> are you okay? They're like, are you okay? You look sick. And I'm like, I am thin. What are you talking about? And then sure enough, he would be like, you gained three pounds, didn't you? And I'm like, how does he know this? And it's this whole self-sabotaging thing that happens when they're they're not only are they cheaters, but they're also underlying abusers. So then they start to kind of, it kind of all kind of yeah. correlates. It, it kind of intertwines, I should say. Mm-hmm. And so it's, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty crazy to say the absolute least. You got to do the work. You got to do, you the, work gotta do the work on yourself. And it's so important that if you go through your life, so let's just say you're in a relationship right now, you're married right now. You right. might not really be thinking divorce, but you wanna, you're watching the show. Right. Um, maybe you think it's funny, yeah. maybe whatever it is, but you know, you're listening because you're thinking, well, am I heading down that road? And right. I can tell you that if you focus on your own joy, just right now with yeah. the kids and the chaos and the COVID and the whatever's going on in the yeah. world. You know, if you just go, oh my gosh, this man's driving me crazy, whatever. It, like, no, just focus on your own joy. Yes. Focus on the joy with your kids. Mm-hmm. Go for a walk with your, whatever. If he doesn't want to do it, you go do it. Okay. And if you start focusing on your own joy, you are preparing yourself for anything. Because right. some of this, like we had to learn afterwards. Right. But if you can do it. Was it was years of growth. Literally. Yeah. It, and, it, and it's like, it has nothing really to do with, with me per se. Like I saw a therapist. And thank God I have this mentality of past tense is nonsense. Like, I can't go back. I can't unchange. I can't undo. I did everything that I... I felt like I was in the army. Yeah. Be all that you can be. I promise you, I felt like I was in the army. So. You were in the war. Huh? You were in the trenches. That's for sure. Like, oh, oh, we got to work this out. Yes. And then after a while, I was like, you know what? It's not that I'm, I'm, I'm not a fighter or that I want to give up. Mm. But there's a point where you're like... It's just not worth it. You just know. I'm, I'm good. I'm out. And you just know, but you know, at the end of the day, it is a reflection of them. You don't know exactly what's going on in their heads. That's true. You actually don't know who is around them at work or anywhere. It could be someone on the freaking freeway, like or looking an at them. Thing, yeah. So I think my message about this before you become ultra paranoid from right. the show is that there is nothing you can do to prevent someone from cheating on you. There's nothing you can do. There's not a single thing you There's can do nothing, yeah. um, to prevent them from cheating Are you on sure you. about that? I'm sure. <laughs> just kidding. No, there's nothing you can do. No. I was just kidding. Like, my mind was going so oh around. I was like, wait, wait, wait. Are you sure about that? I'm kidding. Because there's really not anything there that really, you can do. There really there's isn't. Really not. But in another episode, we're going to talk about all the things we do. Right. To prevent them from doing it. I mean, hello. Yeah. yeah. I but, mean, and then I love that. We're like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you only knew if you only, because at the end of the day there's nothing you can do so if, if you can just kind of surrender to that like there's nothing you can do to control this person to yep. to prevent it so you might as well relax 
and let sit it back, enjoy your life. Like find the joy in every day that the man comes home. Right. And every day that you're with their, your kids, right. every moment that's happy. Because like Delia said earlier, if you're living a life where you're just like, who's texting him? Where is he going? Why is he going? Why, Why is it taking so long? Why is it taking so long? Yeah. yeah. Right yeah. away. It's what like, does that mean? Your mind's going 100 miles an hour. And honestly, that's not a way to live. You're going to end You're... up living it twice. So you, you know, we believe in, we're very spiritual and we're Christian women. Yes, um, but we also understand manifestation and we understand the power of energy. Of course. And things. And so you can actually cause the very thing that you're trying to prevent to happen. Of course. And I'm not an expert on that. You can kind of Google all that. But if you're constantly thinking, I know he's, he's up he's to out, something. He's out, he's I know out. he's cheating. I know he's cheating. I know he's cheating. But if you feel it, usually when they say go with your gut, oh, that's for a reason. No, and that's because yeah. the gut is like, oh, something's not right. And you already know. And sometimes it's just like, it's almost like it, like an intuitive thing. Yes. And especially as a woman. And if you're Latina, forget it. For like, get you're just it. like, you just start throwing that roast and at him. But <laughs> that's yes. another show. Yes, that's, another, that's another show. That's another show. But you know what? Like, you will have your intuition. Yes. You will have hunches. You yes. will get vibes and feelings about certain people. Of course. Situations, moments. But at the end of the day, even in that, just, you know, you pray on it. We're going to always tell you to pray on things pray on because things, yes. it will fall in your lap. Literally. You will not have to go looking. It'll come seek you. And in an, earlier, you. In an earlier episode, we talk about that, yes. of the prayer that changed our Power lives, changed our, our, mm-hmm, our marriage. And when you start to surrender to that and to your faith and to your just trusting, even though the alarms are going off, yes, I'm not saying be naive or anything like that. Be aware. Be aware. But don't go hunting. Don't go dig. You don't need to do it. It will. I promise you. If you look for it, it'll find you. Yeah. You if will. If you look for it. Yeah. Yes. It's like, so I, I say it'll come. It'll come. It'll come. You, you will be shown the truth. About right. your spouse and right. about your situation. And, you know, there's nothing worse than living with someone. I, I think, in my opinion, it's better to be single and alone yeah. than to be in a really bad partnership or in a really bad marriage where there's a lot of volatility, where there's no trust. And then if you have to go back to ground zero, then both of you need to do the work and both of you need to see why it is that you're not comfortable, that I'm not comfortable. And sometimes not all men cheat. Sometimes the women are a little trifling. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I know quite a few women that are, you know, that I've known in, in my past without giving any names by no means. Um, and just, I think sometimes women can be a little bit more sneakier yeah. than guys. Yeah. Guys are a little sloppy and then they just forget like that they forgot their second phone. Oh, <laughs> in the <laughs> they car. They in the yeah. car. And so all of a sudden you find it. And mm. so I think women have a tendency to be a little bit sneakier, but that's not to say that everyone that you're going to come across, whether you're in a relationship or in a marriage or in a partnership with them, that they're going to be the ones that are going to cheat, whether it's a man to a yeah. woman or a, man, or a woman to a man yeah. or a man to a man or a woman to a woman. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. Nowadays, you just you just don't yeah. know the dynamics yeah. of each person, but um, you just, you just got to go through the motions though. Don't you agree? Yeah, I think so. And, um, you know, I think for me, it's just the peace, you know, really trying to find a way to preserve your peace while keeping your eyes open. Right. You know, and just navigating in a realistic way, but just enjoying each day because I look back and I think about the moments where I was a little bit nervous. Like I was a little bit just what's going on, what's going on, what's going on. And yeah. I know that for my ex, he was like, you know, I only cheated on you twice. And it was yeah. like, no. You got caught twice. twice. Okay. Yeah. And it took 12 years in between. But what really happened in between? Well, I can tell you what happened yeah. in between. Every alarm was going on. I had alarms going off at all, all different yep. stages of those additional 12 years from the first time he got caught to the last time he got caught. There were lots of red flags, little right. signals here and there. But I was sitting there going, unless I know for sure, I'm not doing I'm just not going to do anything crazy because. You can build up scenarios in your head that are so really, wild. Yeah. You just don't even want to live and it like twice. And like you said, yeah, exactly. You're going to live it twice. You're going to live the momentum of what you thought happened. Yeah. And even when the reality hits, you're still like, no, I think that this happened and this is how that happened. Plus what he said, plus this, plus that. And now it's just a mountain of just issues and problems. And you're just like, you just got to figure that It's figure like, out. what is it about us women that we have to see like... It in the act. Yeah. It's like right? we have to almost like even if we saw the video and Or even if we walked in, we'd be like, Yeah, but I think they were changing the sheets. <laughs> yeah. She's like 
She's an expert at changing the sheets. You know, that's what they were doing. I heard she's good at changing the sheets, and he seemed pretty excited about it. You know. Yeah. So that's kind of the issue. I think sometimes I think we kind of want to see what we want to see and hear what we want to hear and feel what we want to feel, but in reality. You know what? The essence of the reality, we know what it is. And yes. it's one thing for you to say, no, it's not like that. And it's another thing for you to say, this is what it is. And if you decide to stay, if you're listening to this episode and you're just like, oh my gosh, I know he's up to no good, but you don't have the proof. Maybe you already caught him. Maybe you've caught him right. a few times. You have to really understand then why you're there. It's exactly. If you have a clear understanding as to why you're there. What's the benefit? Is it just till the kids get out of high school? Is it till you get your business off the ground? Is it, you know, like Delia said in the beginning, is it because this has happened to kids? You know, there's all these life events and you, you're in love with like the Facebook version of yourself, yes. you know, and of your family. That's fine and dandy. But however, you know, you have to realize that pretending like everything's great doesn't make things great. Right. Um, but and I, I think everyone smiles for the camera, right? Yeah. Honestly, everyone yeah. smiles for the camera and they'll show you the best side of themselves. Yeah. But I do, I have met people who, um, it's mostly, I mean, I've met people that not that they change, but I've met women who have stayed, but they're very right. aware that their husbands have stepped out. Right. Some of them have even gotten women pregnant, had children outside, outside of their marriage. marriage. And they're still like, I don't want her to have him. And then so now she's helping raise the second. That, no, that, not even oh. that. It's that because I've now, heard stories like that where the see, woman no. stays, sticks it out, and it's like, just bring the child oh, over. My God. We're gonna raise this child you know, at a wedlockish. Or the guy is like leaving every week to yeah. go visit the kid, and yeah. then now it's like, well, how do you feel? And I'll give you one little scenario, like. So I had already been divorced from my husband for about two years and I went to one of his family events because I'm still close to his, to my in-laws Yeah. and everybody's very, very kind to me and I'm very Aww. grateful for it. And so I got invited to this, like this event. I, I don't know what it was. Now, everyone's not kind and grateful to me, by the way. No. <laughs> She's like, for the record. For the record. For the record. I love that you have that, that bond and like that communion yeah that's awesome because not everyone gets that so yes. you're very blessed uh, i you know and i feel it yeah i'm very grateful very, it's very been a blessed. lot of years and, but um I'm, I'm very grateful i understand that it's not a perfect common thing, yeah it's, a common it's thing. not very common yeah but one of my um uh in-laws their husband stepped out and had a child oh and very and they were like married 15 years or something wow and had a child with a co-worker and this co-worker yeah and this woman she's one of the ds and of she course. was like she was like telling me like oh poor thing you should just take him back look at him poor Aww. thing you should take him back and i said i just and she goes How, you know men yeah. make, she said men make mistakes now granted she's older she's a little bit old school okay so and yeah. so she's like men make mistakes and they're all the same and that type of thing yep and she's like, you know, you should take him back. So then I asked her, I said, okay, well, answer me this. And she's like, yeah. And I go, how do you feel? Right. Every time he walks out that your husband walks out that door to go visit his other kid. And she goes, oh, no. And she's talking in Spanish. And she's like, it's horrible. And I sit here you and I'm going see. crazy. And then I'm like texting him if he's late. And, and it's the craziness. And I thought, I can't. I can't. That's just too crazy. I can't. But I will say, in in my opinion, if you do stay, because I've done both, obviously. I'm, I'm out and I clocked out. Uh, thank God I clocked <laughs> out a long time ago. Um, but when I was clocked in, um, I know that the power of prayer is beyond me, though. And I know that I would say prayers and I still and believe it or not I know it sounds crazy because it is but I still do say my prayers towards him I don't wish oh, him yes, ill will I do and um but when I was married I did wish for that protection because I do feel that when you marry when you marry your king yeah. as the queen your household is your kingdom and you have to protect your kingdom from the peasants and if the king is allowing the peasants to come in <laughs> yes there's your kingdom. That is it. You know, and I know somewhere, and listen, I don't know the Bible by heart or anything. I don't pretend to, but there right. is something in the Bible about creating those hedges of right. protection around your family. And right. it is a man's responsibility to do that. I need to put barbed wire around the hedges, You know, too. put that chicken wire for the chickens, you and know. And let that electric, yeah. like, it's got electric, the electric ones. <laughs> like, peasant, get yeah. out. I got some fried chicken on the fence. <laughs> yeah, I got some fried yeah. chicken. 
you know. So, I mean, it is important if you're in a relationship and yes. you're wondering, like, huh, I wonder if my guy... Just pay attention, you know, to yeah. how when women are flirting with him, how he handles it. Um, I think that's very... I think the way that a man reacts towards a woman's attention is pretty indicative of who he is. Yeah. Because there is a way to just be very subtle and, and just be a complete gentleman to say... Thank you for your offering. Uh, <laughs> yes. But uh, no, thank you. Mm-hmm. And then there's a way to just be like, hey, I thought you'd never ask. So, yes. <laughs> right? Yes. You know what? Because my, yeah, because my husband wasn't a skirt chaser. Okay, so mine was, so I totally get that. Part. Yeah, he wasn't. So mine wasn't a skirt chaser, but he yes. didn't know. He didn't know how to say no. Ah, he so. didn't have. He never had his out till this day. If somebody comes up to him and says, oh, can I have it? He's like, he's oh, like, he's yeah. emptying his pockets. Like, he's like, he I have it. Have no, breaks. let me, <laughs> he let me have breaks. for a loan. Yeah, he doesn't yes. have, a, he can't say no. Uh, and and so I first I thought it was a little bit endearing. Yeah. So we'll talk We'll talk about this in another episode. Yes. But, but mine wasn't a skirt chaser. And in mm. fact, my brother-in-law used to say, you know, you know, Rach, he's like he's, he's a good guy because he's yeah. not a dog like us. And I'm like, what? And they would say because we freaking go look, and not just because he's being a little bit more respectful, but being a little bit more sneaky, right? So it's not even his style to chase. I don't think you know. Uh, I mean, I know that when we first met, he went out of his way. He shot a shot or whatever. And I remember hearing he the stories it. that how it was a big deal for right. his friends to see him do that because. He never was one. He was like a flycatcher. Yeah. Just kind of whatever came around. You know, like Star Wars, Jabba the Hutt, how it just sits there and bigger <laughs> person it, and whatever comes around, he takes. He's like, hey, it came at ex. me, I'm going to take it. I'm going to take ex. her, I'm going to take her. That's my ex. And that so. probably explains why some of these women were like, because mm-hmm. let me tell you, ladies, the guy that he, the person he's going to cheat with yeah. or whatever, oh, it's probably not going to equate to you. Right. And we deal. talked about this before. Yes. For instance, uh, without bringing celebrities out, uh, our old governor. Oh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> we're, we're in California. <laughs> so Arnold Schwarzenegger used to be our governor. Yes. And so that was out of left field for me. I was like, if she had a shot with him, then anyone that works Dang. for me has a shot. I mean, there is just, there's no boundaries at that point. It's, it, I just couldn't believe it. I mean, it's one of those where your mouth drops. You're like, how is that possible? Yeah. So I remember, you know, when I used to have housekeepers and I, you know, I went through my little um, phases of having housekeepers and through the, through the doorway, I'm like, let me see. I was like, okay. Okay. I think I can hire her. <laughs> She's, you know, older Latina, what have you. I know yeah. I had a few younger girls. I'm sorry. I'm just not going to expose myself that way yeah. I mean just but I guess with it doesn't Mr. even matter Arnold, it doesn't even matter it like doesn't even matter I mean, yeah it that, doesn't even matter you know and that's what that was such an eye opener <laughs> like was it too. not ever yeah like and, hello and that's just, so how, and that's just how, how it happens it's not always going to be someone that you think is better looking than you right you might walk into a room and see the most beautiful woman and think oh my god I'm being that's intimidated and you might think that's the one that's and the one. it might not be and it's it could not. be the girl Serving the coffee over here on the side. Do you, you want know? a creamer? What do you want? You, <laughs> <laughs> what do you expect? You, know, you can't blame the guy. You want know, a creamer. It's like, so anyways, um, that's basically what we have to share so for this if, episode. But at the end of the day, if you do decide to stay, power of prayer. If you decide to leave, yes. power of prayer. It doesn't matter. You know, live with the faith and continue to carry on and then just be happy because nothing outside of you is going to make you happy. Everything's from the inside. It's what you feel. It's an internal thing. Yes. Happiness is from the inside. And it's a choice. And it is and it, a choice. It's a choice followed by actions. Absolutely. And you want to absolutely do the work on you. Even if you stay, if you're in the marriage right now and you're on the fence, start working on you. Choose you right away. Choose right you away. right away. And just start choosing your happiness, your peace, the Doing dynamic the work. Doing with the your work. children, with your friends, going to lunch, whatever you got to do to start creating that balance in your life. Absolutely. And if your marriage happens to come to an end, you will be on solid ground. You're going to feel that like balance. Like you already that started doing what you had to do. Yes. You're going to have the tools you need to, to get through it. Absolutely. So that's it for us today. I hope you guys have an amazing day. And remember, power of prayer. Stay tuned to follow along with our mantra. At the end of each episode, we have an amazing, powerful mantra that we want you to say with us. To help give you peace and, and that strength and that strength that you need to get through. Have a great day. Have a great day. Father God, I ask that you bless me to understand 
that it's always darkest before the dawn, that your plans for me are bigger than my plans for me. I trust in you, Lord, that you will light and shine the path I was meant to be on. I am open to receive the blessings coming my way. I declare that I deserve respect. I deserve love. I deserve happiness. I deserve to feel beautiful. And that I deserve fresh lettuce.